Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line right now. Yes, sir. Roy Jones. Junior. Roy Jones Jr., sorry. Roy what Jones up? Jr. What up, brother? Man, man, Roy, I'm blessed, black, and highly favored, man. I've been, I've been arguing about you all weekend long, man. Cause, cause, cause ever <laughs> since the Mike Tyson, Roy Jones fight was announced, it, it, it seems like it's just a level of disrespect on social media for Roy Jones Jr. Like, like I said on the radio last week, I said Roy Jones has had a, a better boxing career than Mike Tyson, and he was a better boxer than Mike Tyson. And they acted like I said, like. Uh, God wasn't real or something like that. It was, and I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was ever a debate. People are crazy. You can't pay people much attention. Just gotta focus on what you do and keep it pushing. You know what I mean? So why why did you decide to do this fight? Why did you decide to to fight Mike Tyson right now? Two reasons. Two reasons. A, when I won the heavyweight title, the only heavyweight I said I would have stayed heavyweight to fight would have been Mike Tyson. At that time, Mike had recently retired. And Mike said he was done with boxing. So people said, no, Roy was off money to fight Mike back. No, 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 no. Mike said he was done with boxing, so I let it go. And I went back down to light heavyweight. So at this point in time, we got COVID. We got everybody stuck in the house. We got Mike putting out good videos and getting a lot of good responses from it. So everybody jump up. I want to fight Mike. I want to fight Mike. I want to fight Mike. Why they want to fight Mike? Because Mike getting so much attention. But mm -hmm. on my own, I'm just doing my little training video where I'm training some of my people, not really putting them up a lot, just every now and then randomly posting them, and I'm getting a lot of attention as well. So somehow Mike figured he called me because he knew I was always the easiest person to make a fight with. I don't duck and dodge nothing. So you call Roy, and, and it's like, he's like, look, we don't want no boxing people. We don't want no boxing promoters. We don't want no boxing managers. We don't even want no boxing lawyers. We just want to put you and Mike in the ring and let you and Mike eat off what y'all make. And y'all can give a lot of charity. I was like, you know what? That's not a bad idea. And I did see how good Mike looking on the on the video. So I'm like, okay. Um, I know I'm the lighter guy. And I also felt like because I'm light, they know that, you know, it's probably a little bit less risky for him as well because I'm smaller than him. So they felt like, well, let's take Roy. So Roy has the name. Roy has everything. Roy's still active. Roy can move like hell. So if you can't catch Roy early, you're going to have problems. But we're also a punch. Yeah, I respect that with Mike Tyson actually doing the fight with you because, like you said, you have already been training people all this time. You have the gym. You fought two years ago. So you're not rusty. Because I see a lot of people talking about, oh, it's going to be dangerous. I saw George Foreman saying that. So how do you respond when people say, well, you know, this could end badly. This could be dangerous. What do you say to that? Then you can walk out your door and come in contact with the wrong person. And that could be dangerous because you can end up with COVID-19 and be up out of here. <laughs> so, I mean, how God got for you to go, you're going to go anyway. So what's the deal? What, what am I losing that on? So if I did that or if I just went somewhere and called COVID and went, at least doing this, I went like I want to go. So what's the difference? I really choose my fate if I could. They told me, you probably won't get killed. We're good. I would die like this and then catch COVID and die. Now, Roy, 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 I got a feeling you wanted, you do want to, go in the ring like because because i always wonder do you think staying around too long hurt your legacy uh it didn't really hurt my legacy what it is people have to understand you have to understand that what you judge is you judge on the way up to the heavyweight division mm -hmm. and the one drop down then you stop because that's what that's what my goal was after i quit going with my goals which was after i won the light heavyweight title that's when my career started to decline but i didn't have goals and i didn't realize that I was doing this because people love to see it and people want to see me do it, so I did it. But before then, I was always goal-driven. And Tyson was in my goal-driven uh, mindset. He was in my plan for my goals. So when I won the heavyweight title, I said, I'll fight Tyson. And he's the only person I'll fight as a heavyweight. Then i come back down and win the light heavyweight title. Then I'd be done. But when I had a hard time because of the weight loss, people wanted to see another fight, so I did that. And I kept on going and kept on going. Well, I should have stopped there. But in some people's minds, it could have hurt the legs, but if you go back and look at it, go back and look at the highlights, go back and look at all the stuff that was done, nobody ever turned professional as a junior middleweight and became heavyweight champion of the world. And then they could do about that. They can try to say, oh, his legacy is like, no, pound for pound, nobody in the sport of boxing ever covered pound for pound as much weight as I covered. You understand? I went from 154 
to a guy that weighed 228, that's a lot of damn weight. That's what you call pound for pound. So I hear all that, but I don't hear all that. But you know what? In my eyes, I don't really care because God is the ultimate judge. So how do they want to see it? I don't care. When Mike said, I want to fight Roy Jones, what? Why he want to fight Roy Jones? Because you know Roy Jones is an easy person to make a fight with. That has never changed. It ain't changed today. It was like that yesterday. It was like that 20 years ago. And it'll be like that 30 years from now if I'm still alive. So I stand for what I stand for. And that's all I care about. Now it's an exhibition match. So so break it down a little bit. So it's only it's only three rounds. No, 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 no. It's eight. You guys no, are doing eight exhibition rounds. crap. They lie, they lie to you. We ever heard of eight round exhibition. That's a lie. <laughs> You're in an eight round exhibition with a bulldog. That's a lie. <laughs> Don't believe it. So I hear that, but I ain't never heard of an eight round exhibition. So I can't come here like this no three round exhibition. This is not the case. So y'all doing eight rounds. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are, so what are the rules for this? Because it is different, right? They call they're calling it an exhibition. So what's the rules? Is there headgear? Because I see them discussing, oh, they should wear headgear. No, Gear. What they should have did, what they should have did, they should have made it with 16 ounce gloves, but they made it with 12 ounce gloves and no headgear. 12 ounce gloves in, but two ounces bigger than the regular gloves we fight in anyway. So that's just like a fighting glove. So 16 ounce barring gloves, you're going to do exhibition, would have sounded a little bit more exhibitionist to me. You understand know I me? Mean? But 16 ounce gloves would have sounded exhibitionish. 12 ounce gloves does not sound like exhibition to me. That sounds like bullets and bees. You understand me? When I say bullets and bees, he throwing bullets, I'm staying with bees. That's what that sound. And headgear don't do nothing to protect you from cuts anyway. Headgear don't protect you from no concussions and nothing, right? Uh, and make your head bigger, give you a bigger target for him to hit. So I'd rather not have headgear. Now, was, is it true that Bernard Hopkins wanted to do an exhibition match with you and you turned him down? No, no that's not true. Don't ever listen to that. What I just told you, I'm the easiest person on planet Earth to make a fight with. Now, if it's real, and y'all got that real De Niro, y'all serious, we're gonna make some real money about it, I'm cool. I don't have time to waste time just to get y'all some attention. You understand me? There's a lot of guys that are talking now, Roy ducking this and uh, Holyfield ducking, ain't nobody, I mean, not Holyfield, uh, uh, Tyson ducking this, ain't nobody ducking nothing. If we ducking something, won't y'all go fight and see if y'all get as much attention as me and Mike got fight? Cause if y'all didn't need us, then y'all would be talking. But y'all can't get that kind of attention. So that's why you're talking. Cause you're jealous and you're upset and you're mad. Cause two guys decide to get together and do something for the COVID situation and for charity and to help some people out. And y'all mad about it cause we got attention. We're hating, bro. Anybody turned down nothing. And you know, this this cat to my, oh, I would have boxed for uh, in 2021. Like, I might be dead by 2021. Are you serious? <laughs> 2021, what are you talking about? And I turned it down. How I'm turning something down that he's scheduled for two years from when he said it. I turned that down. You know, now, I, let's, talk about, I, let's talk about what's real and what's not, right? Because you're talking about <laughs> money, money for coronavirus. We've seen some figures thrown out there. So what kind of money do you stand to make from this fight, you and Mike? And where is some of that money going? Some of that money will go to breast cancer. Some of that money will go, go to uh, uh, human, uh, human trafficking. Uh, some of that money will go to big brothers, big sisters. There's a lot of places it's going to go. Um, so I'm not really concerned about how much we make. I'm just so happy that Mike chose me to go in the ring with. And I always wanted to see, even in my older days, what it would be like being there with Mike. Because Mike was one of the most exciting heavyweights of all time. Mike will come out there, Mike on number one speed. So all that stuff they're talking about, like you said, let's talk about what it really is. Mike on one speed. <laughs> so. No, I read I read Jay Prince's book, the uh, the Art and Science of Respect, and he spoke on how he tried to make this fight happen a long time ago. Why, why you think it didn't happen back then? He did. He tried to make it happen, but he, they told Mike told Mike people told him at the time. I don't know if he forgot it, but Mike people told him that they Mike was through with boxing. Mike didn't want to fight no more. So I said okay, and I left it alone. Now somebody else came along and said that somebody said something about they offered me forty million. Man, come on, bro, I ain't. Get for me to fight the dude I fought for the heavyweight title. I got way less than that to fight him, and he was just, as, in my opinion, just as dangerous at that time as anybody else was in the heavyweight division. So if you did offer me double or triple what I had made to fight that dude to fight Mike, and I wanted to fight Mike, you think I'm gonna say no? This Roy, oh, I'm gonna say no, no. So no, I I tried my what I got back was he didn't want to box the most, so I went back and did what I had to do. Now, Roy, for this night, I want to ask you. Are you in the background? Did I just hear chickens in the background? 
Roosters. You already know. You, I'm the chicken man. You already know that. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta ask you: Are you gonna have any artists walk you out in the ring? I'll never forget when Roy Jones performed <laughs> before his fight. Y'all must have forgot. Y'all must so, have forgot. <laughs> what's gonna be happening when you go into the ring? I don't know yet this time because they also gonna have some artists to perform on the show because it's really a big event that they bring this time. It's not like normal boxing. So it's gonna be like, I think there'll be two or three acts on the show, major acts, I can't reveal them yet. So um, if somebody like that is there and they got a hot song and it gives my blood pumping, why not? Or I might make my own hot song and get my blood pumping. Y'all know how I do. No, don't perform, don't perform. We want you to keep your energy for the ring. Don't perform, we don't just keep it for the ring. I ain't said perform, I said just to bring me to the ring. Okay, all right, there you go. Hey, I'm 51, I need every ounce of energy I need. I never do it, what I did in Radio City Music Hall right now. That's way too much energy exerted before the fight. And you're going out with Mike Tyson, not, not this time. You know, Roy, when you went up to heavyweight, and then came back down to lightweight. How much? How much of that you think diminished your skill set? Came back to lightweight. The muscle loss. I lost twenty five pounds of muscle, and it really messed my body up more than I thought it would. But the first fight to win the title, which is what I had, which was goal driven. That was my goal. My heart went out and won that fight still. And that's why I tell people when you got goals or when you goal driven, you're a different athlete than you are when you're not goal driven. So they come back to my rematch. Whatever I do, you know, because y'all, y'all, I ain't scared of nobody. So of course I'll fight, but at that point, I'm not goal driven no more. There's a different situation. When you're goal driven, is one thing. When you're not goal driven, it's like y'all know you go in the studio, you you try to make a make an album, and you got some stuff in your mind, and you got a reason you want to prove a point. You go in that one way, but if you just go in there just to make an album. You're gonna be like whatever, whatever comes out comes out. You just gonna throw it out there. It's not gonna be the same. So so when you when you when you did the you know, you went to four different weight classes. Was that a goal or were you just bored? Because you was beating everybody up. So were you, were you bored or was that a goal? Those were goals except the heavyweight. I had never planned on going to the heavyweight division. But to me, God has his ways of speaking to people. So he came to me. I think I had a dream that I fought Holyfield. So I woke up next day and said, you know what? I ain't doing nothing else. I don't want middleweight, super middleweight, light heavyweight. Cruiserweight really ain't that interesting right now. Why not go fight for the heavyweight title? So I went and met with Holyfield. Holyfield said, no, I got too much to lose. I mean, everything to lose and nothing really to gain. If I beat you, it ain't nothing for me. But if I lose you, I look bad. So I was like, oh, I can respect that. And I left. But well, next fight, he lost to John Reese. And right after that, John Reese said, I'll fight Roy Jones. So I'm like, yes. But Bob Fitzsimmons back in 1896 is the only person in the history of boxing to ever win Middleweight, light heavyweight, heavyweight title, and come back and recapture the light heavyweight title. So what people didn't understand was, after I won the heavyweight title, I had one more goal. I had to come back and recapture the light heavyweight title because that's what Bob Fitzsimmons did. But what I did do is I added to that goal because I added to that history because he didn't start as a junior weight. He started as a middleweight. Also, I added the super middleweight title to that, to that list because back in his day, there was no super middleweight title. So now I got middleweight, super middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight, and then came back and recaptured the light heavyweight title. That's why I did that. Gotcha. You know, I told what? somebody, I'll oh, go ahead, you. I was gonna say, how do you win this fight? I heard you say earlier that it, Mike will have to catch you early. So in your mind, what's the strategy to beating Mike Tyson right now? In my mind, the strategy is to move around, box him for the first two or three rounds, make him use his legs a little bit, then the, the last five rounds, I try to see can you outbox him. And you know, he's always dangerous, but you got to try to outbox him. Um, sometimes those plans work. Like he said, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you get hit in the mouth and stuff change. You hit in the mouth, sometimes it might call you to stand right there and go toe to toe. I don't know. So you never can tell what happened. And depending on how hard he hits you in the mouth. He hits you in the mouth hard, you definitely want to go toe to toe because you're going to want to get your lick back. So who knows? Now, you retired two years ago. Have you been training since your retirement? Have you still been in the gym? Because, you know, we've seen Tyson did gain a lot of weight, so we've seen Tyson wasn't fit. Now he's starting to get back in shape. Have you been staying? You stay training? Yeah, I stay kind of fit. Uh, I went up to close to probably 225 as high as I went. But I came back down because I stayed training my fighters, and I stay active because I had to be able to show them things 
And every now and then, one or two of them might want me to come in and show them how it goes in the ring. For real, they might not believe what I tell them. So I have to show them what I tell them. So I do stay active and I have been staying pretty active for this last two years, yes. Are you gonna, how, how does training your body now differ from when you were in your prime? It's got to do less work, harder work, more rest. Mm. You think this is a one-off fight for you or are you willing to do more after this? I think it's one off, you know. Why why would I go try to make those other guys famous when all they gotta do is all they guys to say about me right now is negative stuff. So if you're gonna talk negative about me, what I'm gonna give my time for, I don't need y'all, y'all need me. If I ain't fighting, you don't nobody care what y'all do. You know what I mean? So it's like why would I give them the time of the day since they wanna talk negative? Go do it yourself then, you feel me? I ain't gotta help you. I done, I'm the one shot life until you in the beginning. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be nobody. I carried boxing in nineteen nineties. The decade right after Tyson left and fell off the boxing, I picked boxing up and took it like I was supposed to take it. Like a G. I ran the game. I made people happy to be to watch boxing. Y'all shit showed down to come watch ref fight. Then y'all wouldn't do what y'all had to do. Because y'all knew it was ref fault. It was gonna be entertaining, exciting, and somebody was gonna get knocked out. You understand me? I held boxing down 10 years, 12 years really, by myself. You understand me? Even when Floyd was young, I was holding boxing down then. Like Max Kellerman says. When I was in my prime, Floyd was in here too. Then nobody knew who Floyd was. They knew who Roy was, because Roy was holding that thing down. And then Floyd came on, Floyd took the torch, and Floyd held it down. So these other people, you can talk, but we held it down for our errors. Tyson held it down for his error. Roy held it down for his error. Sugar Leonard held it down for his error. Uh, Muhammad Ali held it down for his error. Pernia Whitaker held it down for his error. We hold it down for our error. Everybody else in them errors, they cool, but don't get mad at us because we were the ones holding down for the error. Now, when you fight Tyson, you know, people will say, okay, you guys are both over 50 years old. They'll be taking it easy on each other. Is there any taking it easy, or you just go, oh, you going for blood? Like, you going to knock Tyson out? <laughs> you know, I got to be careful how I say it because they, then they might not let us get, get in there too well. But it's like, I ain't taking it easy on nobody. And Tyson don't know how to take it easy on nobody. So I know he don't know how to take it easy on nobody. So why would I prepare to take it easy on him? He ain't going to take it easy on me. He don't know how to take it easy on me. It's like people do, people get the game twisted. You know, you ever watch a puppy pit bull? He don't know how to play. He'll play for a minute, next thing know he's for real. He's serious because they don't know how to play. <laughs> you know, Tyson like a puppy pit bull. He don't know how to play. He gonna try to play, but he can't help it. He's so proud he can't help it. Now you guys also have a docu-series leading up to the fight. Is that correct? Yes, and it's been very entertaining. I saw two of the episodes. Out of this world. Mm -hmm. do, do you have a relationship with Mike Tyson? Not really. Never have historically? Never sat around and kicked it, anything like that? In China. <laughs> and neither one of us spoke Chinese, so it really wasn't a lot we said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know, Roy, I, I know you train people, and uh, I was telling somebody this weekend, Roy Jones Jr., was like the Patrick Mahomes of boxing. Like he, he did things in that ring people never saw a boxer do. So is it possible to teach somebody to do what you used to do? I don't know if you can teach that. I don't try to teach that. That's, that's, that, that comes directly from above. I don't know if I, I don't try to teach that. I just try to teach them to understand boxing the way I understood it, but all the other stuff, that's on them. If God bless them with that, then that's on them. But I don't, I don't go in expecting nobody else to be able to do that that's why i'm trying to tell you about those other guys that's doing all the talking they couldn't do none of that like you said it's like patrick mahone do stuff that you don't see on the football field it's just a second that was just a second year you understand me i did stuff in the box ring that you never saw before so don't y'all get mad at me because god bless me to be able to do that that's not my fault absolutely yeah i mean listen man you know you uh, you I don't think people really understand the accolades. Like the Biters, the Boxers Writers Association of America named you fighter of the decade in the 90s. You know, four different weight classes, which you light, what was it light, light heavy, lightweight? Middleweight, middleweight, middleweight light, heavy, light heavyweight and heavyweight. And heavyweight. Like Ring Magazine named you fighter of the year in 94. World Boxing Hall of Fame named you the fighter of the year in 03. Three-time winner, the best boxer at the SP Awards. I. I was I was really shocked this weekend, man, when I said what I said last week about you having the better boxing career than Tyson, and people told me I was tripping. I was really don't, shocked. Hey, don't, that was don't, don't don't be shocked. The haters gonna hate. People are always gonna hate. Don't worry about that. And let them hate. I'll go in and retaliate. Let them hate. 
I already tell you, don't you worry about it. I got all this. <laughs> well, the fight is happening on <laughs> September 12th. Where can people watch everything leading up to the fight and then the actual fight? A lot of it, you got to download this app called Trilla. They got everything on Trilla. Then they will have also the fight going to be on pay-per-view or in demand. So either in demand or download the Trilla app. Because the Trilla app, you can download your phone and you can watch all the episodes even leading up to the fight on the Trilla app. T-R-I-L-L-E-R, Trilla, Trilla, Trilla. Now you mentioned uh, Tyson, you mentioned yourself, and you mentioned Floyd Mayweather. Who's the next boxer you checking out that you really like that that's, you think is going to take the torch to the next 10 years? It's hard to say because there are a lot of good boxers out there right now, but I haven't seen anybody really rise to the top. Or I have seen a few come close, but right now Canelo is the man. You know what I'm saying? But the showmanship and the... The, the added, the it factor that we had, I haven't seen that yet. But there's a kid coming up by the name of Tiffimo Lopez and a kid by the name of Devin Haney. These oh, two that's kids, right. Devin Haney. kids have to be watched. One of, those, one of those guys may end up having that it factor, but we got to see. So Tiffimo is going to show us a lot when he fights against Lomachenko because that's going to be a really good fight. Lomachenko is good. Uh, he's one of the best boxers I've seen, I've seen in a long time. Chance Crawford, one of the best boxers I've seen in a long time. But we still gotta have that. It's like they gotta give us a little bit more entertainment for them to have an it factor where everybody shuts down everything else and come watch. No, nobody has risen to that spot yet. Canelo doing good because he got good opponents to do it with. But we still want to see that that different than everybody else. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like you don't want when you go see Pat Mahomes play, you don't see just another QB. You see a QB do some crazy stuff, stuff that other QBs ain't doing. That's what we missed in boxing. We ain't seen nobody else in boxing right now do that craziness that nobody else is doing. And that's what we're looking for. Gotcha. Yeah, I like, I mean, I like guys like Earl Spence. I like guys like Terrence Crawford. I love Canelo. But I, I understand what you're saying about the, the showmanship. At the end of the day, it's still a yes. show. Like, like I always said, if Adrian yeah, Crona was a better boxer, he'd be the biggest thing in the sport. Right now. Right now. If he was a better boxer and knew how to tone it down, just leave it on TV, he'd be the biggest thing going to boxing right now. I also feel like in this era, though, it's harder for boxers to talk shit like they used to. No, you got you can talk shit, but you got to talk shit and back it up. You can't talk shit and not back it up. So you're going to talk shit, you got to walk shit. If you ain't going to walk shit, then don't talk shit. Mm-hmm. You understand me? So when you talk shit, you got to go out there and back that shit up. If you ain't backing it up, then you got to be cool with that. I, I like Ryan Garcia too, Roy. Yeah, I like Ryan Garcia too. Ryan Garcia is very explosive. I think he's going to be good. But like I said, once again, we still look for that person who's going to do it and entertain us while they do it. That's what, we, that's what we're missing right now. Absolutely. Do you right, think well, that this fight, you think this upcoming fight should have any um any 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 mark on y'all legacies at all? Should they even count this towards the Roy Jones Jr. Mike Tyson legacy? Man, me and Mike Tyson doing this, like I said, it's a charitable event. We doing it because everybody's stuck at home with COVID right now. I mean it's a tough situation for everybody. We're trying to help make money for different situations who need help in a bad time. So everything is about more giving than us worrying about what people think about us. Now, we also going to be us because we are us. You put two of the most exciting people in the ring ever, something exciting has got to happen. And we both have huge egos. So we're not about just go out there and lay down or go out there and do whatever. But at the same time, this is more of a help thing. 50, 51 and 54, you can't count this as, as towards our career. We, we way beyond our careers, you know what I mean? Also, I got a team of good fighters myself. I got Shady Gamow, whoever know, uh, Chris Eubank Jr., who is WBA interim champ, who may have a shot at Canelo soon. Got a kid named Kevin Newman, who's up and coming prospect. Got Glenn Hagler, got Fernando Bunch, got a Michael Williams Jr. Got a, got a crowd of them that, that are really on their way up too. So I got my team, and like I said, I don't try to teach them to be like me, I teach them to be like them. And I got another one I call White Chocolate, his name is Andrew, I forget Andrew's last name, but Andrew gonna be all right too. So I got a good little team that I'm trying to build. And James Wilkins got somewhere. I got a team that I got one of them from somewhere. One I'm going to end up having the it factor. One I'm going to do more than he's supposed to do because I'm giving him the basics, but it's on them to get that it factor. Hey, what about body head banger records, man? Is this, that, that's, that's shut down? Volume two, volume, two, volume two on the way right now. <laughs> volume two on the way. It's already done, actually. It's already done, actually. It's just going to come out right now. While the iron is hot, I'm going to strike right now. You still rapping too, Roy? Oh, come on, oh, Roy, you know. You know, I don't stop. You know me. I don't stop. If I'm still fighting, I'm still rapping. 
what, 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 what about rapping brings you joy? Like, what, like what, what about that makes you feel good? I really just enjoy the energy that it gives you and the fact that you can say what you want to say and really ain't nobody can say nothing about it. Because once you say it and put it on rap, ain't nothing they can do about it. It's out there. <laughs> nothing they can say about it. All they do is try to answer. And most of them can't rap enough to answer it. The ones that, if I'm referred to somebody, they can't, they're not rappers like that. So, but once you say it, you speak what's on your mind and you don't have to, you don't have to argue that. Like the song said, y'all must have forgot. I don't have to argue that. Just, just push play. I ain't got to say it. They list is, it's on the, it's on the record now. That's, That's a fact. Right. And when you coming back to commentating, man, I got it. I don't understand why you're not doing uh, the boxing commentating. Well, my contract with HBO expires in December. So after my contract expires in December, because they got out of boxing, then it's very possible I'll get a job somewhere else after that. Okay. I'm sure oh. you want to. Oh, yeah. I love, love commentary. All right. Well, Roy, we appreciate you, man. And be safe out there. And we look forward to seeing you and Tyson in that ring. Yes, sir. You know, be you safe, win, so may the best man win in this fight, yeah. September 12th. Hey, thank thank y'all so much. Got a shout out my man, Alizé, for setting this up. So thank y'all so much. Uh, looking forward to it. I can't wait. Uh, and my man, Harry O. I can't wait because I'm so excited to see what it's going to feel like to take the first punch from Mike. You know what I mean? Because after that first punch, Boom, game on. Why you do know? you like pain, bro? I got a feeling you like pain. It ain't that I like pain, I like challenges, brother. I love challenges. When they say something like, like them snakes I picked up like not long ago. When I see something that I can't do it, I'm going to do that. You feel me? So it's like my father taught me as a kid to face your fears head on. You feel me? So more people will be scared of my test. I'm like, you know what? Let me see what it's like. I want this. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming from Let me go. I, I want it to show me. You know what I mean? Show me I can't take it. You know, I want to ask you one more question. Why do you think the legacy of Mike Tyson never went anywhere? Even though we saw him get beat quite a few times, why do you think people still got that, that, that fear of Mike Tyson? Once again, Mike Tyson had and still has that it factor. Mike was always deadly entertaining. Mm -hmm. Even when Mike lost, he, if you if he can stand on his feet, he'll still fight you. That's why he beat Holy Fear. Yeah, he's showing you that I might be losing, but I'm still ready to fight and go to the end. You understand me? That's why you have to respect Mike. So although Mike might have lost his hunger and lost his whatever mental he had about being in the ring boxing, Mike still was Mike. And but when Mike was on top, this is what people forget. When Mike was on top, Mike gave us everything we could ask for and some. Like I said, people shut stuff down to go watch Mike fight. People shut stuff down to go and watch Roy fight. Ain't nobody like that, nah. You say these two fighting that people don't care. People, okay, I'm gonna try to watch it. They might, they might not. Half time, we don't even know they fight. But when Roy was fighting or when Mike was fighting, people shut stuff down to go see that because you're gonna have something to talk about. You know, the barbershop, you the close on Monday. But you're gonna remember what Mike or Roy did on Tuesday that you still gonna talk about. It. You feel me? Because we're gonna do something that you still gonna talk about. Either the way Mike knocked him out. Or the way Mike might bid as hell. We don't know, but we're going to have something to talk about. We can promise you that. That's right. That's All right. right. Well, we appreciate you. Good luck again. Roy Jones, Jr. <laughs> Breakfast Club. Good Thank morning. You. Thank you. Peace.